Section 4.5.10, Police Use of Force. Hello, I'm Dr. Adam McKee. Today we're going to explore the contentious issue of police use of force, the legal boundaries that define it, and the consequences when those boundaries are crossed. This discussion is particularly relevant in light of recent debates and public scrutiny regarding police conduct. Police officers are granted the authority to use force to achieve legitimate criminal justice objectives, such as apprehending suspects or preventing escape. However, this force must be reasonable, meaning it should be proportional to the threat posed in the situation at hand. Determining what constitutes reasonable force can be highly subjective and varies by situation. Officers are trained to escalate force only as necessary and are encouraged to de-escalate whenever possible. Excessive use of force, where the level of force exceeds what is necessary to safely control a situation, can lead to accusations of police brutality. This includes physical violence, verbal abuse, and other aggressive behaviors that infringe on individual civil rights. Instances of police brutality can result in severe physical injuries, psychological trauma, and even death, sparking significant public outrage and calls for reform. These incidents often gain national attention when captured on video and shared across media platforms, leading to a critical examination of police practices. When excessive force is used, officers may face both civil liability and criminal prosecution. Victims of excessive force, or their families, can file lawsuits against officers and their departments under various tort claims such as wrongful death or false imprisonment. Most states allow individuals to sue police officers if they exceed reasonable force, leading to harm. Additionally, federal laws, particularly through Section 1983 of the Civil Rights Act of 1871, enable victims to sue for violations of their constitutional rights. To succeed in a 1983 suit, plaintiffs must demonstrate that the officer acted under the color of law and infringed on a constitutional right. However, pursuing legal action against police officers is complex due to the doctrine of qualified immunity. This legal protection shields officers from liability for actions performed during their duties unless they violated a clearly established statutory or constitutional right. Qualified immunity often presents a significant barrier to holding officers accountable, as plaintiffs must prove that any reasonable officer would have known their actions were a violation of an established law. In recent years, the judicial system has seen shifts in how these cases are handled, reflecting a broader societal push towards more accountability and transparency in policing. Some courts have begun to question the scope of qualified immunity, leading to important precedents that could affect future law enforcement conduct. This ongoing legal and public debate underscores the necessity for comprehensive police reform. Reforms may include improved training focused on de-escalation techniques, enhanced accountability measures, and revising the standards around qualified immunity to balance protecting officers performing their duties with holding them accountable for misconduct. As we continue to evaluate the boundaries of reasonable force, it is crucial for the legal system, law enforcement agencies, and the public to work together to ensure that police use of force is just, proportional, and respectful of civil liberties. Only through this collaborative effort can trust be rebuilt and the justice system be seen as truly just. Thank you for joining me in this important discussion on police use of force and its legal ramifications. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. How should our society balance the needs of law enforcement with the rights of individuals? Let's continue this vital conversation. This has been, Police Use of Force, with Dr. Adam McKee. Stay engaged as we navigate the complexities of law enforcement and community relations in future discussions.